Good morning, church family. I thought I'd get a little more quieter, but it didn't. (laughs) And good morning, community of faith, uh, worshiping with us on your television sets. I know you can hear me today, and so we are happy that that the sound has been restored and you're joining us in our worship service. God is good all the time. And all the time, amen. All right, just a couple of announcements to highlight today. We have a lot uh, going on in our service. Uh, Team meetings will be held on Monday and Tuesday. Please check the bulletin uh, for the the committee that you're on and, and, and when it's going to be held. The potters will be will, are, are, is willing to do some limited yard work this fall. If you need some work uh, or need some help with some yard work this fall, please call the office or call myself, and, uh, and we'll try to line, line that up. Healthy snacks will be uh, available during worship hour or fellowship hour. Also, today is the first day the nurses will be screening BMI, which stands for Body Mass uh, Index. For questions and to get your BMI, see one of the members of the Health Wellness Committee during coffee time. Crop walk is uh, uh, fastly approaching. Uh, Look for Lois Ciso and support this worldwide call. She does a super, super job in that. So uh, look for her and, and and, and try to help her out on that. At least you have a quick announcement too. morning. Um, My announcement's real quick and easy. Um, I'm asking that all the parents have their kids stay downstairs during fellowship time. When we ring the bell, please have them line up. That includes junior high and high school, because high school has a new spot and junior high has a brand new classroom. So please make sure you guys wait by the doors when I ring the bell and do not go up to class until we're ready. Thank you. Let us pray. Spirit divine, we come in joy, we come in distress, we come energized, we come tired, we come surrounded by other Christians, we come in loneliness. Surround us with your loving presence. Open our eyes, ears, hearts, and spirits. Help us to experience your grace. Help us to hear your still, small voice that calls us to love you and others, that calls us to serve you and others, to treat all as brothers and sisters, for in Christ we are all your children. In his name we pray. Amen. Our hymn of celebration this morning is number 73, O Worship the King. Please stand as you're able and join in singing.
Our Psalter reading is found on page 854. We'll read responsibly Psalm 139, page 854. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O Lord, you know it all together. You pursue me behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high, I cannot attain it. Whither shall I go from your spirit? Or whether shall I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the utmost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, and your right hand shall hold me. If I say, let only darkness cover me, and the light about me be night. Even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is bright as the day. For darkness is as light with you. For it was you who formed my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's room. I praise you, for you are fearful and wonderful. Wonderful of all your works. You know me very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intensity brought in the depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my unformed substance. In your book were written the days that were formed for me, every day before they came into being. How profound to me are your thoughts, O God! How vast is the sum of them! If I would count them, they are more than the sand. When I awake, I am still with you. O that you would slay the wicked, O God, and that the bloodthirsty would depart from me! Those with malicious defy you who those who lift up themselves against you for evil. Do I not hate them that hate you, O Lord, and do I not loathe them that rise up against you? I hate them with perfect hatred. I count them my enemies. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And see if there be any wicked way in me, and lead me to the way everlasting. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without Please take a few moments to greet those around you today. As you are being seated, please turn to hymn number 393, and we'll sing it through twice. And this is the Noisy Offering Hymn, and the uh, proceeds go to the Crop Walk today. Spirit of the living God 
Today we celebrate September birthdays and wedding anniversaries, so if you have a September birthday, you are invited to please rise, or if you're not able to stand, hold up your hand and we'll recognize everybody with September birthdays, lots of them today, lots of birthdays today. Anybody have one special that you want to tell us about? It's a blessed one, Linda says. It sure is. <laughs> Let's sing to everybody. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday. We do indeed wish you a blessed birthday and many, many more as well. How about wedding anniversaries? If you have a September wedding anniversary, would you please stand? Or if you're unable to stand, please hold up your hand. And I see that the men are standing up as their wives stand up. That's a good thing. <laughs> no birthdays and no anniversaries in the choir at all this month, huh? Wow. Anybody want to tell us about your special anniversary? We'll sing to you anyway. <laughs> Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary, God bless you. Happy anniversary. wish each of you a blessed anniversary and many, many more. Let us be in a time of silent prayer and then the morning prayer. Everlasting God, you are the one who created the universe and who created each one of us, breathing the very breath of life into us, <coughs> redeeming our lives in Jesus and sustaining our lives in the Holy Spirit. All honor, praise, and thanksgiving belong to you now and always. We thank you, Father, for our chancel choir the bell choir, the chime choir, and all of the persons who give of their time, effort, and energy to share their musical talents to glorify you and to build up your people. We are grateful for all of the persons in our congregation who give of themselves in so many ways, especially as we begin a new Sunday school year and many other spiritual growth opportunities that don't meet during the summer months. We ask, O oh God, that in your great love and care that you would draw near to those who are sick, those who mourn the death of a loved one, those who are confused in life, those who seem to lack purpose and direction for their lives, those for whom life seems to be more than they can bear, those for whom financial pressure, pressure is a constant and for all those who are in distress in any way. Help them to turn to you, to trust you, to place their entire lives before you. Although their troubles may not disappear, help them to know that you walk with them through the shadows of death and life, and may they find hope and help in your light, even Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. We are aware, merciful God, that Christians in many places around the world are being persecuted. Church buildings are being destroyed. 
Christians are being beaten and killed for their faith. Draw near to these martyrs to sustain them in difficult circumstances. May your spirit of peace prevail so that the persecutions may cease. May others know of your love because your faithful ones have loved even those who would harm them. Help each of us, Lord, to echo these familiar words, to know thee more clearly, to love thee more dearly, and follow thee more nearly for thine own sake. We ask these things in the precious name of Jesus as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, But deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Today is our Sunday School Kickoff Sunday, and I'm going to ask Lisa to come forward. And if you'll turn in your bulletin to the insert regarding Christian Education Sunday. And I want to remind all of those persons who are being called up to the front. That includes our uh, teachers, our leaders, and those of you third graders who will be receiving Bibles. Please bring your insert with you because you will have a reading part after you get up front. And parents of the third graders, you are asked to come forward with them. Okay. Hello? Can you hear me? Can you guys hear me? Blue. Joel? Blue. (laughs) Can you hear me now? Okay. Okay. I would like to call forward the teachers. Um, In the nursery, Corrine Jurgensen, Jamie Lane, and Kelly Murphy. Pre-K, Patricia Dameron and Annette DeVochner. Kindergarten, Julia Wilson. You can come forward. Um, First and second grade, Will Hasse and Carolyn Tuttle. Third and fourth grade, Corrine Jurgensen um, with assistant Alyssa Beam. Kelly Murphy with assistant Kayla Jewell. Fifth and sixth, Jay DeVochner and Cheryl Inley. Junior high, Diana Esser and Leanna Williams. High school, Rick Feltner. And then the substitute teachers for the uh, children's classes are Tony Allen, Ann and Martin Gutzmer, and Rich Murphy. And our adult Sunday school class teachers are the loyalty class, Roberta Brown. The seekers class, Ralph Sintony. The Spirit Class, Joyce Mitchell and Donna Boardman. And the 20s, 30s, 40s, and plus class, Paul Copeland and Karen Cook. And I believe Rich and Kelly Murphy serve as our secretaries, and Linda Billiette is uh, an assistant with that. She passes things out for us and before classes and collects them. Did we miss any teachers, anybody? Dear friends, let us recognize those who have responded to the call of God to become workers in the Sunday school, to teach, to administer the work of teaching, and to support the work of teaching our ministries of Christ among us. Those called to these ministries need our loyal support and prayers. Let us pray. Eternal God, once again, we thank you and praise your holy name for our Sunday school. We thank you for each one of the students who come. We thank you for each one of the teachers who take the time to prepare a lesson, who give of themselves in love and care to each one of their students, who seek to help each one of us become more faithful disciples of Jesus Christ. 
We praise you, we give you thanks, and we honor you, God, for each one of their lives and their willingness to serve in this manner. In the name of Christ, we ask it. Amen. Teachers and leaders, you have recognized God's call in your lives. Will you endeavor to develop your gifts of teaching so as to continue to pass on the Christian faith? Will you be faithful to the task, taking seriously the commitments of time and talent? Will you take seriously your role as learner, studying diligently the scriptures and traditions of the faith? Congregation, please join me in the response. We pledge ourselves to pray for you and for the educational ministry of this congregation. We pledge ourselves to enable, encourage, and love you in this ministry. We pledge ourselves to be learners with you, diligently studying with you in the scriptures and traditions of the faith. Teachers, we're going to ask you to stay and uh, kind of move towards the pew as we call the students up then. Okay, and I'd like the students to come with their parents, please. Um, Emmett Brokaw, Madison Copeland, Clark Heron, Lily Johns, Colin Monismith, Matthew Sentney, and Ava Williams. Remember to bring your papers with you. By the way, we didn't mention Lisa, our, our director of children's ministry. We should have mentioned her first. Parents and teachers, you're asked to join me in the next section. Receive the word of God, learn its stories, and study its words. Its stories belong to us all, and these words speak to us all. They tell us who we are. They tell us that we belong to one another, for we are the people of God. Third graders, please join me in your response. We receive these Bibles with our hands, our hearts, and our minds. Thank you. We will read and study the Bible together. And congregation, would you join me in the response? We rejoice in this step in your journey with God. We pray God will guide you, your family, and us as you use this holy Bible in your home, in your Sunday school classes, and in our worship. We will learn together and grow in our love for God's word. Again, third graders, join me. The word of God is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Thanks be to God. Let's be in prayer again. And before I pray, I want to, I want to point out that there's uh, several persons here uh, as teachers who are familiar faces because they've taught several years and they've re-upped for another year. But we also have several new teachers, at least for this year. They may have taught in the past, and they've come back to teach again, and we really appreciate every person who has stepped forward to teach this year. Did you have something else you were going to say? Okay. Lisa's going to present you with your Bibles now, and then we'll pray.
Let's pray. Again, God, we give you thanks for the beginning of another Sunday school season. And we pray that this Sunday school year would be very, very fruitful. Be with each one of the students. Help each of us, God, to take reading the Bible and studying the Bible seriously. Help each of us to be committed to being regular participant in a Sunday school class. Help us to grow in our faith, deepen our relationship with Jesus Christ. Continue to be with each one of these teachers, God, as they share their own faith, as they share their own witness about their relationship with you in Jesus Christ. And above all, God, again, we just pray that each one of us will grow to become more faithful disciples and followers of Jesus Christ. In his name we ask this. Amen. Are you done, Lisa? She's done. I'm done. Thank you all for coming, for helping us in Sunday school, and congratulations to our third graders for receiving your Bibles today. As we prepare to bring our gifts before God, hear these words from Psalm 43. Then will I go to the altar of God, to God my joy and my delight. I will praise you with the harp, O God, my God. Why are you downcast, O my soul? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God.
To God be the glory, to God be the glory, to God be the glory for the things he has done. With his blood he has saved me, with his power he has raised me. To God be the glory for the things he has done. We bring these our gifts, O God, asking that you would use them to proclaim the message of Jesus Christ throughout all of our world. And to you, and to you alone, be the glory, be the honor. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. We are receiving into membership today several persons and congregation. As those persons come forward, you are asked to turn in your hymnal to page 38. Page 38. So those of you who are listed in the bulletin, if you'll please come forward at this time. Bud Bradley is becoming an associate member of our congregation today. What that means is that his full membership will be retained at First Christian Church in Greenville, Illinois. But as an associate member, he is proclaiming his desire kind of fully to be more involved in this particular congregation. The rest of the persons standing before you are becoming professing members by transfer from other congregations. Those congregations are listed in your bulletin. And two of the persons who had planned on being here today uh, had a last-minute conflict arise, and uh, we'll be taking care of their church membership at another date. Because each of these persons are being received by transfer or as an associate member, I'll ask them this one, or one question. As members of the Christ Universal Church, will you be loyal to the United Methodist Church? And as a member of this congregation, will you be faithfully faithfully participate in its ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, and your service. Congregation, would you please turn to the commendation and welcome, number, page, uh, number 16 on that page 38. Would you please stand? Would you please turn and face the congregation, please? Members of the household of God, I commend these persons to your love and care. Do all in your power to increase their faith, confirm their hope, and perfect them in love. We give, we give thanks for all that God has already given you, and we welcome you in Christian love. As members together with you in the body of Christ and in this congregation of the United Methodist Church, we renew our covenant faithfully to participate in the ministries of the Church by, by our, our prayers, our, our presence, our, our gifts, and, and our service, that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. Can I squeeze through here? Thank you. Here is your certificate of membership. Congratulations and welcome. And your certificate. Congratulations and welcome. Congregation, you may be seated. If you are interested in becoming a professing member of the congregation, uh, please contact me and we can talk about that. I am planning on receiving members again next month. Uh, so if you have any interest at all in becoming a professing member of the congregation, uh, please talk with me about that.
Good morning. Good morning. Today's gospel lesson is from the book of Luke, chapter 14, verses 25 through 33, the cost of being a disciple. Large crowds were traveling with Jesus, and turning to them, he said, If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother, his wife and children, his brothers and sisters, yes, even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. And anyone who does not carry his cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. Suppose one of you wants to build a tower. Will he not first, da- first sit down and estimate the cost to see if he has enough money to complete it? For if he lays the foundation and is not able to finish it, everyone who sees it will ridicule him, saying, This fellow began to build and was not able to finish. Or suppose a king is about to go to war against another king. Will he not first sit down and consider whether he is able with 10,000 men to oppose the one coming against him with 20,000? If he is not able, he will send a delegation while the other is still long away and will ask for terms of peace. In the same way, any of you who does not give up everything he has cannot be my disciple. Thanks be to God.
It's time for the children to go to junior church, and as they're going, we'll sing hymn number 63, Blessed Be the Name, and we'll sing it through twice. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. As of Friday, our worship broadcast is up and running. Sound has been restored to it. And for that, we give thanks. In May, I believe, we had our equipment checked out, and we uh, were told at that time that our equipment was, uh, everything was right on our equipment, and we believe that it was a Comcast problem after that. We found out Friday that that was not correct, that there was indeed something wrong with one of the pieces of our equipment, and thanks to a Comcast technician who discovered that and corrected that, we are able to be on the air with full, complete sound this morning. And so we are indeed thankful for that. Choir, it's great to have you back. We've missed you. Well, we haven't missed you individually because you've been out there, but we've missed you as a group up here. And you may have noticed that there are some new faces in the choir this fall. And you may notice that there's still two or three empty chairs, and Debbie assures me that even if we get more people than what we have chairs for, she'll find a place for you. So you're still welcome to come and join the choir. Today marks Teresa's 10th year anniversary as our church organist. Thanks, Teresa, for a job well done through the years. Thank you for letting me play. We appreciate that. To mark her 10-year anniversary, she has promised us to do a recital in the spring. We're going to be having some work done on the organ in January, and so uh, she promises she'll do a 10-year anniversary recital for us, and I'm making that public in order to keep her (laughs) promise. When I started in ministry 40 years ago, this time of the Christian year was called Kingdom Tide. You had the day of Pentecost occur in May, and then you had the Sundays after Pentecost, and then sometime in August, that Pentecost season changed over to Kingdom Tide. The colors for Pentecost were red, the color for Kingdom Tide was green. And then somewhere in the uh, mid to late 70s, under some uh, liturgical reforms, it was decided to do away with kingdom tide season and make the whole time from the day of Pentecost all the way up to the last day of Pente- the last Sunday of Pentecost, Christ the King Sunday, the Sundays after Pentecost. And then they still used red for part of Pentecost season and then somewhere down the road they'd say well we're going to switch over to green and so we've been on green here and and you notice in your bulletin now that I've been listing we're now so many Sundays in kingdom tide because I still like that kingdom tide designation rather than just saying by November we're in like the 23rd Sunday after Pentecost kingdom tide designates growth, growth of ourselves as Christians, 
growth of ourselves as a congregation and as a church, growth of the kingdom of God. And green symbolizes that growth. You may remember, or you may not, it's hard for me to remember what the last three sermons have been about, but the last three sermons have kind of focused on this idea that as Christians we are called to grow. We had a sermon about Christian life being a marathon. We had a sermon two weeks ago about what excuses do we use to not do the things that God is calling us to do. And last week the sermon revolved around the theme of what does it mean to practice humility and how can we allow humility to fill our lives. In the season of Kingdom Tide, we continue that idea of what does it mean to grow as a Christian. The following ad occurred in a London newspaper decades ago. Men wanted for hazardous journey... Small wages, bitter cold, long months of complete darkness, constant danger, safe return, doubtful, honor and recognition in case of success. The ad was signed by Sir Ernest Shackleton, the Englishman who was a well-known Antarctica explorer. Thousands, thousands responded instantly to the call. They were ready to sacrifice all for the elation of adventure and uncertain honor. And the person who wrote that ended it, shouldn't God's, should God's children do less? In today's scripture reading, it simply started out by saying the multitude of people were following Jesus. And as this multitude of people followed Jesus, after they had seen him work miracles, after they had seen him work wonders and signs, as he looked at that multitude of people, he turned to them and he wanted to make sure that they knew what it meant to follow him. What does it mean to be a follower of Jesus Christ? Sir Ernest Shackelford, in his his advertisement, wanted to leave no doubt that hardship was going to be involved. Today, when you turn on the television, you see all kinds of advertisements that tell you how easy it is for you to call a certain number and get a $1,000 loan. How easy it is for you to get a reverse mortgage on your home. How easy it is for you to go into a car dealership, sign your name, and drive off. We have all kinds of voices that are telling us, especially on television ads, how easy things are. Especially if it involves getting money somehow or another. Jesus wanted to make sure that these multitude of people following him knew that they weren't in for an easy task if they followed him and so he turned to them and he said spoken words that to you and me sound pretty harsh unless you hate your father or your mother or your brother or your sister or your children or anybody else that you're related to unless you hate them you can't be a follower of mine And I'll admit to you that every time I read that passage, I try to find a figure out a way that Jesus didn't really mean what he was saying, did he? Well, if you read in the Gospel of Matthew where Jesus says something very similar to this, it actually says in the Gospel of Matthew that Jesus says, unless you love your mother and your father and your brother and your sister and the rest of your relatives less than you love me, cannot be my disciple. Different commentators kind of translate the Aramaic word that is used there somewhat differently, but it kind of hits the point of that Jesus wasn't saying that we had to hate somebody with the way in which we think about the word hating. 
The Aramaic term doesn't have the loathsome emotion that we attach to hatred. What Jesus was in essence saying is that you have to love me more than you love anybody else and more than you love anything else if you're going to be my follower. Unless you love me the most, you cannot be worthy of the name. Unless every other relationship is secondary to our relationship with Jesus. Unless every one of our priorities is secondary to Jesus' priorities in our lives. Unless every one of the things that we value in life is less important than what Jesus values for our lives, we cannot be a faithful follower of Jesus Christ. It's a hard, hard word. And yet Jesus was making sure to those multitudes of people who were following them that they knew exactly what was involved in being a disciple of Jesus Christ. Well, then he went on to say, unless you're willing to take up your cross and follow me. As I read this past week, almost every commentary and almost every sermon that I read about this passage made a similar comment about that. For many of us, we talk about bearing our cross as an illness that we have or a difficult time that we have. We talk about the difficult circumstances in which we live. But Jesus wasn't talking about the circumstances of our lives that happen to each and every one of us as being our cross to bear. Bearing a cross means that we voluntarily take upon ourselves to do something that is really counter to what our desires and our natural affections are. Taking up our cross isn't dealing with my bad knee or my arthritis that I have and lots of other people have. Bearing our cross is something that we voluntarily take upon ourselves just as Jesus voluntarily took upon himself his cross. You remember, depending on which gospel the stories related in, it's either James and John came to talk to Jesus or it was their mother who came to talk to Jesus and said I'd like she said uh, I'd like for my two sons to sit on either side of you when you come into your kingdom one on the right and one on the left and Jesus in essence said there was a little bit more about this conversation is is um, well but first of all that's not mine to decide that's up to the father to decide who gets to sit there And secondly, you really don't realize what you're asking. For you will bear the cup. You will bear the cross to be a follower of mine. Jesus made it clear to his followers, to his disciples, and he seeks to make it clear to us that if we are going to be a follower of Jesus, everything has to be in subordination and subjugation to the will of God of God in Jesus Christ in our lives. He, t- he gave a couple of examples. He said, well, there was a guy who wanted to build a tower out in his vineyard. And so he started building this tower, but halfway through he ran out of money. And he couldn't finish the tower. And so for the next several years, there was just this unfinished tower sitting out there in the vineyard for everybody to kind of look at and scoff at this gentleman's lack of foresight. Or if there is an army general who is about to go out to war, he thinks carefully, I only have 10,000 troops at my disposal, and the other guy has 20,000 troops at his disposal. I better think about this real carefully to decide whether I think I can win this battle Or if I don't think I can win the battle, maybe I better go ask for terms of peace. Count the cost. Be prepared to give your all, just as Jesus Christ gave his all. 
He calls us to bear our cross because he bore his cross that was also our cross in giving his life for each and every one of us. Paul Reeves shares that Florence Nightingale at 30 wrote in her diary, I am 30 years of age, the age at which Christ began his mission. Now more childish, now no more childish things, no more vain things. Now, Lord, let me think only of your will. Years later, near the end of her illustrious, heroic life, she was asked for her life's secret, and she replied, Well, I can only give one explanation. That is, I have kept nothing back from God. That's what today's scripture passage calls us to do, is to keep nothing back from God. Because Jesus kept nothing back for your sake and for my sake. Walter Knight relates that Dr. F. B. Meyer came to a crucial transitional time in his ministry. He sat dejectedly in his study. My ministry is unfruitful and I lack spiritual power, he said to himself. Suddenly Christ seemed to stand beside him. Let me have the keys to your life, Christ said. The experience was so realistic that he reached into his pocket and took out a bunch of keys. Are all the keys here? Yes, Lord, all except the key to one small room in my life. Christ said, if you cannot trust me in all rooms of your life, I cannot accept any of the keys. Dr. Meyer was so overwhelmed with the feeling that Christ was moving out of his life because he was excluding him from one interest in his life that he cried out, Come back, Lord, and take the keys to all the rooms of my life. Let us pray. God, you call us to love you with all of our heart, with all of our mind, with all of our soul, and with all of our strength. And you call us to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. God, we are only able to do both of those things as we love Jesus more than we love Jesus anyone else or anything else and so God help us to have the courage to examine our lives help us to have the wisdom to find those places in our lives where we're not yet willing to turn the keys over to you help us to continue to grow as disciples of Jesus Christ Help us, God, to allow the green of kingdom tide to remind us that we are called to grow in our relationship with you. Here we are, O God. Take all of the keys of our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our hymn of sending is number 354, I Surrender All. Please stand as you're able and join in singing.
surrender all. Go out this day to love Jesus more than anything else and above all. Go out knowing that the grace of God the Father, the love of Jesus, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit is yours this day and every day. Amen.